hey guys and welcome to this tutorial on the structure and differences between the types of cartilage that you will find in your body. Now in the last video I briefly described the three types but now we're going to go into a bit more detail so that we can have a deeper understanding of how the skeletal system will support our body. The first type of cartilage we described in the last video was hyaline. A hyaline cartilage is the most abundant cartilage in the body and will support and protect. Articular joints will have hyaline cartilage on their surfaces and it allows the bones to glide smoothly against each other. Now it's also very good at springing back into its original shape as well after force has been applied to it. You'll find hyaline cartilage in the nose, a trachea in your throat, a larynx as well, and also uh, the costal cartilage is connecting your ribs to your sternum. So just writing that down here, found in the nose, ends of the long bones, okay, ribs, and trachea. Now I'm just going to bring up a quick drawing here of a rib cage. So we're going to have a look at the costal cartilages of the ribs. I'll just write that down, the costal cartilage of the ribs. Now because hyaline cartilage will uh, spring back to its original shape, it's going to be very useful in attaching uh, the bones of our ribs onto our sternum. When we inhale and exhale, we're going to want our rib cage to spring back to its original shape, so that's what will happen there. In the last video, I said once we get down to the microscopic structure of the different types of cartilage, we can actually see how they're fundamentally different and how they're going to have different levels of strengths and different properties as well. So just drawing the, uh, the chondrocytes here. So this is in hyaline cartilage. We're gonna have the chondrocytes, which are just those cartilage uh, producing cells. And they're gonna be in a uh, lacuna, which is the, uh, just the space around the cell. And they're all going to be producing an uh, extracellular matrix. So all the different uh, substances and fibers that make up that hyaline cartilage. So matrix will be secreted. Now in that matrix, you're going to have elastic fibers. You'll have our collagen. So that's all of it just drawn in there. So you'll have the collagen. Uh, you'll have chondroitin sulfate. You'll have elastic fibers and with hyaline cartilage, the chondrocytes only take up roughly between a 1 to 10% of the entire cartilage volume, so you're going to have very dense matrix. And that will just provide that uh, strength and uh, give the hyaline cartilage that ability to spring back into shape when it's been, uh, when it's been uh, compressed or uh, expanded. Now, the next type of uh, cartilage that we spoke about uh, in the last video was the fibrocartilage. And we'll just talk about that quickly now as well. Now the fibrocartilage is kind of an intermediate between our hyaline and our elastic cartilage. So it has very thick fibers of collagen in it and that gives it that uh, tensile kind of strength. But we'll talk about that in a second. So it's an intermediate between elastic and hyaline and it has a highly highly compressible uh, nature to it. So it's highly compressible but can resist tension as well. Now the parts of the body that we're going to find that fibrocartilage in will be uh, in the intervertebral discs. So they're going to be resisting the compression of the spine, resisting uh, the compression of you standing up all day. And we're going to find it as well in the meniscus of the knee. Now the knee as well is going to have a lot of pressure coming down on it. And the last place we will find that fibrocartilage is in our pubic symphysis. So just drawing a picture up here of uh, the intervertebral discs in our spine. So in between each vertebrae we've got that fibrocartilage just to resist that constant compression that our body has. Uh, and the downward forces of gravity. So I'll draw that quickly on here as well. So it's just going to be able to uh, resist that compression. Now, and I, I didn't actually draw that on the uh, the costal cartilage of the ribs, but I should draw that now as well. 
just so you guys have a, a better idea of how these uh, different types of cartilage are working differently. So the fibrocartilage resists compression. Uh, the costal cartilage, uh, that hyaline cartilage in the ribs, is going to expand and contract. Okay, so moving on now to the microscopic structure of the fibrocartilage. Now, we're going to have those chondrocytes everywhere as well. So chondro, meaning our cartilage, site, cell. So cartilage producing cells. And they're going to be secreting very thick collagen fibers. And this is how the fibrocartilage differs from the hyaline. Now, all of those thick collagen fibers is what's going to allow our fibrocartilage to be compressed over and over again and always go back to its uh, original shape. So I'll just write here that it's uh, secreting thick collagen fibers. So that's something important to take note of in the differences. Uh, just remembering that, that all that purple area there is just the rest of the extracellular matrix we saw in the hyaline as well. Now moving on to our elastic cartilage, which is our last type. Histologically, it's very, uh, very close to hyaline cartilage. It looks very similar, but just those elastic fibers are going to predominate, and there's going to be a lot more of them, uh, giving it that high elasticity, that, uh, that ability to bend and twist and resist torsion. So very flexible. So the parts of the body that we're going to need that ability to be uh, very flexible is any kind of area that's uh, getting uh, hit or being bent all the time. And that would be the ears and the epiglottis. Now the ears, they, get, they can get kind of bent, uh, they can get twisted, anything can happen to them. And our epiglottis, every single time we swallow, our, our tongue pushes down that epiglottis and it has to spring back into shape so our airway can open again. So just the framework of the ear here and just uh, showing that we can, we can bend and we can twist and flex that ear. Like I mentioned before, microscopically it does look very similar to the hyaline cartilage. But with your elastic cartilage, you're going to have a lot more cells and a lot more elastic fiber. So we've just got all the chondrocytes here and all having lacuna as well, that space around the cell. And there's, a, there's going to be that higher amount of chondrocytes in there because there's more demand on those uh, on those cells to produce more of those elastic fibers. So they're going to uh, replicate more often. Just drawing all of those elastic fibers in there and our extracellular matrix as well. And that's going to be uh, what our elastic cartilage kind of looks like. So many more elastic fibers. It's going to be able to bend and twist. So fundamentally, that is how our three different types of cartilage in the body are different to each other, are serving their different purposes and having different structures to reflect that purpose. The last important thing to note before we end this video is that cartilage is an avascular structure, meaning it has no blood supply. And this is going to mean that it's very difficult to heal when it gets damaged. So you have to look after, look after your joints and cartilage. All right, that's all for our cartilage structure video. And as always, guys, I hope that was helpful. Hope to see you again and do the quiz to help your understanding.